Hello and welcome. You're watching Arts TV Weekly News Review Programme with me, Pete Nash. On Monday, Ethiopia held parliamentary and regional elections with high volume turnout in many parts of the country. This week, we have dedicated the entire programme to bring you election news items, compiled reports from our own reporters and affiliates. Our programme also includes an interview with Bifakado Hailu, the Executive Director of Centre for Advancement of Rights and Democracy in Ethiopia. On the day of the election, polling stations across the nation were open at 6am local time. The stations began filling up with voters who, on many cases, had arrived even earlier to secure their spot in the line. Polling stations, especially in Addis Ababa, were busy throughout the day, attracting long queues of people keen to cast their votes. In some cases, voters reported having to leave without casting their vote due to the station reaching their cutoff time at 6 p.m. In the busiest voting areas, the opening hours had to be rescheduled to allow extra time to accommodate the large number of voters waiting. When it became clear that not everyone had had the chance to vote, the National Election Board issued a statement announcing that the polls would remain open until 9pm or even later when necessary. People were once again seen forming queues at the gates of the busiest polling stations. In some cases, they were waiting until the small hours of the morning, laden with thick clothing to protect themselves from the seasonal cold temperatures. Reports have shown that the voting was conducted peacefully and without major disruptions. According to our own reporters and affiliates, located in towns and cities across the country, the voting was conducted in a calm and peaceful manner. From Jimma to Gondar to Hawassa and the various sub-cities across the capital, the atmosphere was calm, peaceful and participatory as enthusiastic voters completed their ballots. All sections of Ethiopia's populations were seen waiting in line to cast their votes. The elderly, people with physical disabilities and pregnant or nursing mothers were given priority and moved to the front of the lines. It was reported that a young mother gave birth directly after casting her vote, returning home with her young infant. Nearly all international and national accounts of the 2021 Ethiopian parliamentary and regional elections have shown it to be a successful endeavour. Chairman of the National Electoral Board, Bertukan Medexa, announced yesterday the vote counting will be completed and final results declared within 10 days. In the meantime, provisional results are being posted on notice boards on several election centres in Addis Ababa and regional cities. It is expected that in rural areas, the counting will take longer. Many Ethiopians have been wondering why no mention, much less coverage, was given to the national elections by any of the international media. It is said that no major foreign news outlet except AFP and France 24 gave a mention of the national elections in Ethiopia. A representative of Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed said he appreciated the active participation of Ethiopia's population the nation's general elections held on Monday. The Premier said, we have successfully implemented credible and fair elections through an independent electoral board and described it as a historic day for Ethiopia. Pictures are worth a thousand words, he said, and they show the earnestness, commitment to peace and democratic process by our people. Ethiopia won yesterday. Ethiopia will keep on winning. Dr. Abiy cast his vote in Beshasha, his birth town in Jima Zone, Oromia region. The Prime Minister stated that the election went well across the nation. He commended the role of the media in the election process and expressed gratitude to the contending political party leaders. Prime Minister Abiy's elder and younger brothers also cast their votes in the same location. Tofik Ahmed, who is 28 years old, says he is voting for a party that could realise peace and prosperity in the country. Tofik expressed his confidence that peace and development will prevail after the election. The Premier's other brother, Zaki Ahmed, who is a farmer, also expressed his belief that the election will bring hope and prosperity to the country. Preliminary results of the general election are unfolding in several parts of the country. Constituencies and polling stations in places such as Chagni, Debrebahan and Adama have already posted results of the election in public areas. Most of the polling stations in the country, including the capital, Addis Ababa, are going through the process of unveiling election results as the counts are finalised. The board confirmed that the certified results will be announced within 10 days at the national level. The head of the African Union Election Observation Mission, Alusagun Abasanjo said the sixth general election in Ethiopia was a far better process than the previous ones. On Monday, he said, when we see the general impression of this voting day here, it has been a lot better than elections in the past in terms of opening space for electoral participation, in spite of some handicaps, he pointed out. 
Obasanjo went on to say, some of the handicaps are of course understandable. For instance, one of the difficulties is COVID-19. Logistics in this regard were a challenge. However, the delegation leader said, the National Electoral Board of Ethiopia gave swift responses and solved the challenges effectively. He went on to say he has observed dozens of polling stations and voting processes in the capital and that the party agents are very happy and had no complaints on the day. This brings us to the end of another weekly news review on Arts TV. I've been Pete Nash. Thanks for watching and catch you next time. Hello, I'm here with Bifakado Hailu, who is the Executive Director at the Centre for Advancement of Rights and Democracy here based in Addis Ababa. Welcome Bifakado. Thank you for having me. Um, Bifakado is a writer, an active blogger, a political commentator and activist, and has therefore been very busy recently with the 2021 elections here um, in Ethiopia. So, Bifakado, welcome to Arts TV Weekly News Review. Um, can we start off? Can you tell me a bit about yourself and what you do? Yeah, um, I work for the Center for Advancement of Rights and Democracy, CART, as an executive director, and uh, I'm a blogger. I blog on social political issues, and I contribute for um, weekly for the Amharic uh, service of Deutsche Welle. Um, I also write for some uh, local print. Outlet, outlets. Um, and can you tell me a little bit about what your organization CARD does? What is its uh, main aims and objectives? Yeah, so we founded CARD uh, envisioning to see a democratic Ethiopia and uh, uh, we, our activities actually range from awareness creation to advocacy. I see that your organization identifies itself as a rights-based organization. Can you tell me a bit about a bit about that? Yeah, so when we say that we are uh, rights-centered, we mean that uh, everything we do, our activities are, uh, you know, uh, crafted with the objective of advancing human rights. Uh, for example, you, we do a lot of activities in relation to media literacy. So when we do media literacy activity, uh, activities, especially in our engagement with me, media practitioners and online content producers. We are very much concerned about you know, uh, combating disinformation, um, mm. hate speech, and also we encourage uh, conflict sensitivity. But when we do this, we have always put freedom of expression at the center of it because it is uh, a human right and we, our objective is to, you know, uh, advance uh, the, the right uh, for the praise and uh, freedom of expression. But, you know, these rights cannot be uh, protected unless incitement and disinformation are combated by the very people who, you know, speak um, truth to power. Yeah, and very important at the time of election as well. Um, yes. So can you, can you tell me what role did you play in the recent elections? Yeah, uh, we have been engaged in different activities in relation to the, uh, the current election. One of them is to, you know, to contribute something uh, in the, uh, to the peacefulness of the electoral process. So what we did was in our media literacy uh, program, we engaged with online content producers and uh, media practitioners in, you know, uh, promoting conflict sensitive reporting as well as uh, uh, facilitating opportunity of training for journalists and mm -hmm. uh, online content producers to spotting and combating disinformation and hate speech. Also, we did uh, continuous online uh, media monitoring and developed uh, you know, bi-weekly reports for stakeholders so that they can you know, shape their programs based on the trends that are observed in the online uh, conversations. Mm. In addition to this, we also produced uh, voters education materials online as mm. uh, certified voters educators. We also uh, hosted uh, political debates and political 
contenders in, pa in partnership with other civil society organizations. We have also rep uh, you know, represented our own observers uh, under SECO, the coalition which uh, deployed the largest number of uh, uh, observers in Ethiopia during mm. this election. So when you're doing your media literacy training, what do you notice are the main gaps that you are filling with your work? Yeah, so um, uh, what we have noticed is there is uh, a very low uh, understanding of uh, the, the fact-checking, for example, even at mm. the level of journalists. Uh, there is little understanding of the relationship between uh, disinformation and hate speech and their consequences towards, you know, violent conflicts among people vertically or horizontally. And so having, having played a role in observing the elections, um, what is your general assessment now that the election day has passed? Uh, how, what comments do you have about the process and the turnout and the general attitude of the public from the election day? In my observation um, uh, and you know, closer look to the process, uh, in the pre-election uh, times, what we have witnessed is the asymmetrical relationship, uh, the asymmetrical power and economic relationship between the ruling party and the opposition groups. Mm -hmm. So the, the uh, ruling party uh, has uh, pretty much established uh, grounds you know, to uh, win the election even in advance before the polling day, its capacity with, um, with economic grounds is way beyond all of its competitors combined. In addition to that, you know, the uh, party government uh, relationship, which is that they are intertwined to one another, has, you know, gave the ruling party an opportunity to use government uh, structures to mobilize support. Therefore, uh, the election was pre predestined uh, pretty much even before the polling day, but uh, even opposition groups knew that in advance and the only possible outcome at this uh, election is, you know, to have a pretty diverse parliament which is uh, dominated by the already established ruling party. And is there anything which particularly surprised you or excited you about this uh, recent general election? Yeah, so, uh, you know, uh, many people have expected that there will be some conflict or violent incident. Mm. And, well, of course, there were a few incidents reported, but they are not that much affecting the whole process. That was pretty surprising because, you know, I think people were scared that there will be a violence during the election day, so uh, everyone was cautious and it has passed uh, peacefully. That's one uh, surprising but pleasant um, uh, incident. But the other one is that, especially in Addis Ababa, many people had expected oppositions to gain more votes than the ruling party. But from what we have observed in polling stations, in multiple polling stations, it's actually the ruling party that has dominated opposition groups that are even legitimate for many, I mean, uh, popular for many. Uh, so this was, uh, I mean, an, unexpected and beyond the analysis of um, most political commentators. Yeah. Since the election, uh, have, have you and your organization done some analysis on why in Addis Ababa the, the ruling party has, has done so well, seemingly? Uh, yeah, we, we have tried. Uh, we, we, I mean, no one uh, has concrete answers yet, but, uh, you know, uh, the, the type of voters by itself uh, determine who the winner is in the election. So elderly are generally um, supposed to be supporter of the prime minister individually and mm. uh, his party uh, as a group. 
So, uh, so participation of the elderly was bigger. Uh, also, the other competitors, they uh, did not work on their constituency well enough. So I think uh, the, the weakness of the competitors in working grassroots uh, is a contributor and the, you know, the voters who especially uh, favored the ruling party uh, vastly participated in the process than the supporters of the opposition groups. That mm. is uh, my observation so far. Mm. What do you think the opposition groups will have learnt by going through this uh, democratic process? Yeah, so I think uh, the one thing that they can learn from this process is that they are mostly, uh, mostly relying on elite opinions, uh, but election results are uh, mostly dependent on what you do on grassroots. Mm. You have to go knock doors, engage with the voters directly instead of you know, trying to uh, create noise uh, online and on broadcast media outlets. Mm, mm, okay. Um, and yeah, what is your assessment of what will happen next? I mean, it's a difficult question, but what do you think will happen next with the electoral process? Yeah, probably, you know, uh, so the, the legitimacy of the ruling party has been questioned since the postponement of the, uh, the, the election for uh, uh, pretty one year. So uh, somehow the ruling party will, will gain more legitimacy than the last year. This is one of the things that I expect. But uh, what I wish uh, to happen is uh, for the ruling party to work on uh, reconciliation, uh, reconciliation of uh, political elites, because most of the divisions and the unsettling situation in the country is uh, caused because the political elites do not have uh, the, the agreed you know, rule of engagement. Uh, many people suggest some sort of national reconciliation, but I don't think that is as easy and also you know, something that could happen in a, a, a very uh, short time. So what we need at this point is political reconciliation, the ruling party with good faith need to engage with all political uh, parties regardless of their position. They need to sit and discuss on how to go the next five years so that at least after five years there will be an election which will be contested with symmetrical power and economic relationship among mm -hmm. contenders. Great. Bifikari, thank you so much for adding your incredibly interesting narrative and comments to this process. Thanks for joining us.